Right? Mm hmm. Okay. The children are probably stuck at home and are probably sick of maths and English. And uh, if I was thinking that they could do, I mean, all, all, all children draw and colour in, so I was thinking um, if, they, if you wanted to show them a few more tips of how to um, get a very faint watercolour, because watercolour paints are very cheap. These, some, some of them can cost just over a pound. And uh, the right artist could probably do a sellable masterpiece with, with just um, something that you could buy from a shop. So this is the idea of um, just doing a little bit of colour. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to colour this watercolour. And uh, this, believe it or not, will be the start of a tomato. And eventually the colour will build up and build up. Now, once I get this here, although that's very faint, to save time, I've done some, some other tomatoes. Now, you can see that is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And each time, just by using watercolour, as watery as you can get it, um, the colour builds up to that. And it's better than putting it on too thick. The... I've, I've not done a drawing, some people can do drawings. Um, with a drawing, I was going to sh I'll show you, just do that, how to use your brush. If I was doing this as a circle, and I had to keep in to my circle drawing, as you get your water, remember try and keep it as loose as possible, and Always work backwards. You can get a straight line by working back. As the tip is touching where the pencil mark is, it will run out. Then what you do is you press, press down on the heel of the brush to keep the flow of liquid going. And that will give you, and I'm starting again because I would rather draw backwards than push forward. And that would give you your line. And it doesn't matter if that is more faint than that. You can just do your, I need to do a little bit more accurate, I'll do a drawing for it. We'll put the, the stem here and the sunlight here. As you've painted this in, because I'm using straight from there, I think I'll just use it from here because it's getting a bit too, it's too thick. We'll just get it as watery as we can. I've went over that which is going to be a problem but I will just dry it off as quickly as I can. Well, the problem with the um, watercolour paint is when you make a mistake it's hard to rectify because I was going to say there's no white in watercolours, the papers are white but I've just noticed they've got white on this which um, sort of like, so I wouldn't say that, but the white um, is from the paper and you don't usually use white. Um, the green will go over that. So what I'd be doing is, as you see, I've went one, two, three, darker each time. That's supposed to be a little bit of sunlight. I might work on that a little bit. But then the green, because the green is darker than this red, the green will cover it will cover that to a certain extent. So it looks as if we've got the stock of a tomato there. When you're, um, when you're doing leaves or something, you can do a leaf, and when you, um, if there was leaves or anything in that, do your leaf, and it would just be, what I've done is, here I've done one already, so I'll just use this green here, and each time I build up on it, it would be, um, you could see the line. And instead of doing a paint, I just press on one. And the fact that the water goes dark, it doesn't matter. Because I'll show you something else in a second.
when we do that, we can work that in. I'll work that one better. When you're doing something like a flower or something, I'll do it. I was I had one ready, but I'll just do another one. We're just going to use a little bit of red again. And I'll do it on the back because that's nearly dry now. Instead of trying to paint a flower or paint a leaf, press it. Just use your paintbrush and go one, two, three, whatever, four, five, six, seven, quite a lot of petals in this one, eight, nine, ten. Now on that, the water is at the end and it's lighter. Now the way flowers work, that, that, that works quite well. The other thing I was just about to show you was, you follow that line if you're drawing it. Um, will you be, can you zoom in on this one? I've zoomed in most of it. Right. What we'll do is, we'll make this a yellow banana, say, the back of a yellow banana. That's, that looks like yellow ochre actually, but never mind. Again, down and just go around and it doesn't matter how light it gets. The lighter the better and just keep it going and just do with your lines. Try and pull backwards and when it's running out at that end, push the heel in. You can, to get close to a line, just spread up to the line. And uh, I think that will be do for the time being and see how it goes. Yep. Yeah.